Joining us now, the author of the huge bestseller, The Russia Hoax, Greg Jarrett, Fox News legal analyst, uh, and now he has best-selling author also on his resume. We love we love us some Greg Jarrett. Hey, Greg, how are you? I'm fine, Laura. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's talk about where we are here. You heard Chuck Todd saying a functional Congress. I think he means functioning uh, Congress would be moving toward impeachment now, and he's 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 uh, basing that on the words of Michael Cohen, who is being threatened with probably decades in prison, never seeing his family, uh, and total bankruptcy. So that's where Chuck Todd uh, is coming down. Well, you know, Chuck Todd and many in the mainstream media are so anxious for the president to be removed from office since uh, Donald Trump was elected. They've been trying to undo the election results and drive him from office. And they had some help along the way. James Comey and his Confederates, people at the Department of Justice, Robert Mueller. And <clears throat> Michael Cohen pled guilty to a non-crime. It's not a crime if the money came from the president personally. He can spend a billion dollars if he wants for any purpose to benefit his candidacy, as long as that purpose is legal and a non-disclosure agreement is. So it's, it's silly to claim that the president committed a crime because Michael Cohen pled guilty to a non-crime. This isn't grounds for impeachment. Well, explain, explain more on that, because what prominent Democrat legal folks are saying is, well, the fact that Cohen pleads guilty to campaign finance violations at the direction of the candidate, they don't name Trump, but at the candidate, they're, they're obviously basing this on something. And I guess what they're saying is that this was a it, this was an effort to influence the election. Uh, and it, for, for Michael Cohen's part, it wasn't properly you know, disclosed. The income wasn't properly disclosed from Trump or the payoff from uh, from the president's trust to Cohen reimbursing him. But they're basing that campaign fi finance violation uh, accusation and then plea on something. What is it? What are they basing it on? Well, they're simply basing it on the statement written by prosecutors in the Southern District and under pressure. Uh, Michael Cohen pled guilty to it, but it was never litigated. So it has it's it sets no precedent. Uh, you can't really use it in a court of law. Uh, you would have to have Michael Cohen testifying. And let's say, for example, that even though the president paid for it, it ran through an LLC, which is look, looks like what had happened. Mm -hmm. That's an advance or a loan. So if it wasn't properly accounted for, that's the equivalent of a jaywalking fine, a civil penalty in the amount of about 500 bucks. It's not a crime. Uh, in order to be a crime, prosecutors would have to show that the president knew and intended to be violating campaign election laws. Most candidates don't even understand those campaign election laws, and I dare say many lawyers don't. But I spoke the other day to a former career official at the Department of Justice who spent his career doing election law violations, and he laughed, and he said, this is preposterous. It is not a crime what Cohen did or what President Trump did in paying money for a non-disclosure agreement. He said, these prosecutors in the Southern District don't have the first clue about election law. Well, what uh, what about this, uh, what's his name, Weisselberg or the Trump uh, right. Inks was CFO? CFO. Yeah, who yeah. is was also given an immunity deal. Was that in, in your sources telling you that immunity deal he received was to get Cohen, or is that yeah. uh, their attempt to, uh, you know, turn over the furniture and Trump Tower and try to find, I don't know, some, something to throw at uh, throw at Trump in the Southern District? Well, the immunity deal was given early on in the summer, and it apparently helped in bringing about the case against Michael Cohen, but not. Donald Trump. So as far as we know, uh, that's unrelated to the president. Uh, but, you know, don't underestimate the determination of 
prosecutors and the special counsel both to try to conjure a crime out of thin air. Uh, they have done it before, and they'll continue to do it. For example, there was no legal basis to even launch the investigation of Trump and his campaign back in 2016. There was no probable cause, no credible evidence of crimes, no plausible intelligence to justify a counterintelligence probe. These are people at the FBI and the DOJ who invented or exaggerated facts. It was a hoax manufactured by high-ranking officials at the DOJ and FBI. Yeah, well, and again, the pathetic reporting on all of this, uh, people who call themselves reporters who, number one, know nothing about the law, don't make an attempt to know anything about the law, and are just following the herd mentality from you know all the usual suspects on the left that i've i've got to say that is among the most disturbing aspects of all of this i mean people jokingly refer to it as a trump derangement syndrome but i mean the, the way they question lanny davis uh greg we're talking to greg jarrett uh, davis is the attorney for michael cohen and they tr everything that lanny davis has said is, is uh is listed as, oh, this is, you know, the gospel. And then, then they have to turn around and correct themselves because it turns out, well, that uh, actually Michael Cohen knew nothing about the Trump Tower meeting and all these bombshells right. that they were saying, it turns out those bombshells aren't bombshells because they never happened. It's unbelievable. There have been so many bombshells reported by the mainstream media. And in the next sentence is, you know, this is, this is the end for Trump. He'll be impeached. He'll be indicted. And, and then they have to eventually uh, retract those statements and correct them. Uh, and the Cohen case was just another example of this. The media has been complicit all along. They have convicted Donald Trump in the court of public opinion uh, time and again without evidence, without facts. And that's because the media hates Trump. They're unabashed scorn and visceral hatred is apparent in on a daily basis. And not only the stories they choose to tell, but the way they tell those stories against Donald Trump. Uh, Lanny Davis yesterday on with George Stephanopoulos. Again, both of them used to work for the Clintons. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's so choice. So one Clintonista interviewing another Clintonista about Donald Trump. Let's listen. If Michael Cohen committed a federal crime at the direction of President Trump, does that mean President Trump committed a federal crime? President Trump committed a criminal act that corrupted our democracy. That's what the campaign finance laws are about. The same way that the Russians complicit with WikiLeaks and evidence that members of the campaign at least facilitated that conspiracy. I have to have you sound off on that, Greg. <laughs> I have yet to hear truth coming out of the mouth of Lanny Davis. Uh, you know, he went to law school with Hillary Clinton. They've been good, close friends for years and years. He represented Bill Clinton during uh, his impeachment. Uh, and, you know, he's been a longtime Clinton acolyte and lackey. Uh, and the statement that you just heard Lanny Davis say, that because Cohen confessed to a crime, it means the president is a criminal or committed a crime, is just absurd. He's a lawyer. He knows better than that. But he doesn't care. He is an advocate now, and he's spinning all kinds of lies. That's Lanny Davis. Well, even in the interview that uh, Davis did with Chuck Todd, he had to admit that it's basically – just Cohen's word against Trump's, that there is no this any type of what corroborating evidence about Trump's intent or he had to basically admit. And this was from Chuck Todd, who obviously despises Donald Trump. He basically had to admit that, well, he's willing to say under oath that he was directed by Trump to do this. So that's it. Yeah, but the, directed by Trump to commit a non-crime. Right. And that's, you know, that's the difference. Look, prosecutors all the time, under threat and pressure, uh, force people to uh, admit to things they didn't do or crimes they didn't commit. And the perfect example of that is, is General Michael Flynn, who went broke trying to defend himself and eventually caved in because Bob Mueller was threatening to prosecute 
General Flynn's son. So Flynn confessed to a false and misleading statement to the FBI, even though the two FBI agents who interviewed Flynn said he told the truth. Perfect example of how overzealous, unprincipled, unscrupulous prosecutors like the partisan team of Bob Mueller will, you know, force people to to admit to things they didn't do. Uh, and Greg, uh, before we let you go, Bruce Orr is set to testify before Congress tomorrow. What should we expect? I think things will turn out very badly for Bruce Orr, Nellie Orr, his wife, and Glenn Simpson, the founder of Fusion GPS. These are the main players in the plot to use this fictitious Christopher Steele dossier that was used to investigate Trump and spy on the campaign. And I, I have 63 pages of Bruce Orr's communications with Christopher Steele, and they are damning evidence of an illicit plot to break uh, FBI and DOJ regulations and likely the law along the way. So he'll be questioned about all of his nefarious activities with Christopher Steele, who was his covert source. And of course, a lot of this is in Greg's book, The Russia Hoax, huge bestseller. If you still haven't really been able to uh, get your mind wrapped around just how perverse this special counsel investigation has, you know, was from the beginning and became over time. And you have to read Greg's book. It is fantastic. Greg Jarrett, uh, Fox News legal analyst. Thank you so much, Greg. We'll see you on TV.